you know this YouTube project or whatever you want to call it, it started way over my expectations. We passed 5,000 subscribers already. The feedback has been overwhelming and incredibly positive. I've, I'm not used to getting positive feedback, so that's a bit weird, but hey, I'll take it. So a big thank you to all the patrons for making this possible and everyone for liking, sharing, subscribing and commenting. So it's been really good. And some message me right now. More positive feedback. I mean, what can I do? It, it's clear to me that the videos I've made are the kind of videos that people want to see and are interested in watching. So that's that's good, I guess. I'm going to keep making them. Actually, the first month that I made videos, one million minutes viewed. That's crazy, actually. It's, that's a cool number. One million minutes viewed. Wow. So, yeah. Just wish it made a lot of money, too. Anyway, so this video is a bit of an edit. It's a sort of 45 minute clip of my long video that I did with Savoya. And this is the part where I explain the difference between Pillowball and C Hub cars. And I'll make a playlist with all these sort of uh, videos that have to do with C Hub cars and Pillowball cars, just so you can easily find all the clips in one place. I'm going to film some new footage also where I talk about setup for specifically for Pillowball cars. And then I'll also do a video where I try and figure out which is actually better, C-Hub or Pillowball. So those are two, two new videos with new content. But this one is content from the Savoya video. And there will be another a few other short clips uh, also with you know content from that video. So yeah, let's get into it. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. If you like this kind of video, you know, you like the science mode, you like to understand more about the car, then I really recommend that you get my book, Invisible Speed. Um, the link it will be in the description. I can't reveal the website now because when this video goes live, the website isn't quite ready yet. But anyway, I hope you get that book. So now I'm going to explain to you how I understand uh, pillow ball or pivot ball or PBS or just ball suspension versus the C-Hub suspension and how the front and rear end of the car work together. And I'm going to do that by looking at your typical C-Hub car, the Kyosho, and then your typical pivot ball car, the Mugen. And then I'll talk about some exceptions to the rule like the TLR and the S works. This is this is truly science mode now. So Keenan, you can just tune out. You're not going to understand this anyway. Uh, but everyone else, please watch this. Maybe you'll learn something new. OK, so we have to start here with some theory. This is a picture of uh, C hub from the front. You have the knuckle here. Uh, this is a plastic C-Hub in this case and kingpins. And if you view this from the front, then it will look like this. This is the kingpin axis or the steering axis. Uh, the knuckle turns around this axis. And this longer blue line here, this is the center line of the tire. Now, what we actually, this is a bit simplified now because what we are actually looking at is the center center point of the contact patch so that the contact area of the tire on the ground the center part of that that's where we calculate that the, the force is applied so we are now imagining in everything that i'm explaining now we imagine that there's zero camber uh you know equal load on the tire and the contact patch is 
the center of the contact patch is the center of the wheel and tire itself. So just the disclaimer there for any like super nerds out there who want to catch me out. The center point of the tread is outside of the steering axis. So this red line here, this is what we call the scrub radius. So the scrub radius is the difference between the steering, steering axis intersecting the ground and the center point of the contact patch where, yeah, well, at the ground. And uh, this is basically a moment arm. So what I mean is that all the forces that are created between the contact patch and the ground, they will twist the knuckle around the steering axis. And the larger this scrub radius is, the larger the force is that tries to twist the knuckle. I'll, I'll show you here with an actual knuckle. I want this to be really 100% clear to everyone. So here you can see that at zero camber, the kingpin axis, steering axis, is also at zero, so it's vertical. So any sort of force to the outside of that here turns the knuckle. Now, if I go in line, perfectly in line with the kingpin, and I push, nothing happens. I can't turn the knuckle. If I go outwards, boom, it turns immediately. That's because I created a moment arm between the steering axis and the location of the force. That's, that's why I can turn it. Okay, so back to that image here. The moment arm is the scrub radius. In this case, it's called a positive scrub radius because the center point of the wheel in this case and contact patch is to the outside of the steering axis. Okay, so why is this relevant? to the question of how does C-Hub work uh, versus pivot ball. And that's because with your typical pivot ball suspension, the scrub radius is actually the opposite. So let's look at this case. Now, this is actually a C-Hub design and that's because I prefer the C-Hub design because it's very adjustable. You can achieve many different types of front end with a C-Hub, whereas you're very limited with uh, the pivot ball suspension. So I'll show you here. So with the Mugen, they have two balls here. Instead of king pins creating an axis for a knuckle to turn around, they have these two balls. So the upper ball and the lower ball. And if, if we had a good picture from the front, which I don't, you would see that these are at an angle. So there's some inclination to these balls here and that is the steering axis and that's what you can see here in this image so you can imagine that this is a pivot ball suspension and here is the upper ball and here is the lower ball and then this is the plastic knuckle it works the exact same way as this so anyway in this case we have again the center line of uh, the tire or the contact patch and then the kingpin uh, kingpin axis or steering axis is now inclined so it intersects the ground to the outside of the center point of the contact patch so now this scrub radius is called negative so it's actually working in the opposite way to the previous example I'll show you this now on an actual C-Hub. Here you can see that the steering axis is actually inclined. So in, at zero camber, you see that the steering axis has some inclination to it. And what this does is that now on the other one, if I pushed here in line with the steering axis, the knuckle wouldn't turn. But now it's moved that point further out. So even if I go out here and push, nothing happens. I have to go really far out on the knuckle for it to turn when I, when I push on it. So what does this mean? So the positive scrub radius, the contact patch 
center point is to the outside of the steering axis. This is typical on uh, C-Hub cars like the Kyosho. It has this negative scrub radius. This is typical on pivot ball cars. And I made a C-Hub design like this. The intersection point of the steering axis is to the outside of the center point of the contact patch. This will make sense to you if we look at what happens from above. This is now the view of a Kyosho from above. And here we have the steering axis and the center line of the tire. Now imagine that you were to accelerate with a Kyosho. So the front wheels start turning and they start pulling the chassis forward. So what happens is this tire will start moving forward and it's pulling this car with it. So it will want to tow in. Now on the other side, of course, same thing. So both front tires want to tow in because the force on the tire is occurring to the outside of the steering axis. This is the point that the knuckle is turning around. So when the tires want to go forward, they start twisting into tow in. Now, if we look at the Mugen, what happens here is this is the intersection point of the steering axis and it's to the outside of the uh, contact patch center line. So what happens in this example is when you accelerate, this tire will want to twist around this point. So when you accelerate, the front tires are going to tow out. Okay, so let's just pause here and think about this for a moment. What does this mean for the car? Well, this means that when you get on power with a Kyosho, the front end will actually want to turn the car. Now, you may wonder like, what are you talking about? Towing is normally more grip, like how can that be more steering? Well, it's because of this. So imagine this car now is turning left on power. And as it turns left, what happens? more weight will transfer or more load will transfer onto this outside tire. And as more load is transferring onto this outside tire and it's turned left already, this force is trying to turn it even more. So the outside tire actually wants to turn the car even more. This is why you have a slight, uh, this is, this is why the front end of a C-Hub car wants to turn the car on power. If we look at the Mugen, and let's go look at the same tire here. So it, we imagine again that the Mugen is turning left on power. So the load transfers onto the outside tire here. And this outside tire is trying to tow out. So the car is turning left. But this outside tire, when you're on power and accelerating on power, it's wanting to turn the other direction. It doesn't want to go left. It wants to go right. So these twisting forces affect how uh, these two, two different cars perform on power. So the Kyosho front end wants to turn more on power and the Mugen front end wants to turn less on power. Hopefully that's clear so far. Now, what happens then when you brake? So when you brake, I think maybe some of you already guessed. So you brake, this tire wants to tow out. And same, of course, on the other side. So when you brake with a Kyosho, the front tires want to tow out. And that could be a bit of an unstable situation then. Because um, like this is similar to the rear end, how towing makes it stable. That's why we run tow in on the rear. Well, same for the front under braking. If you had tow in, it would make the car more stable, want to brake straight more. When it tows out, the car might start wanting to wander to one side or the other. Then on the Mugen, we have the opposite, of course. So when you brake, this is going to happen. So the tires want to tow in under braking. So the Mugen should be more stable. The front end of the Mugen should be more stable under braking than on a C-Hub car. Okay, so this is the first part 
of the puzzle. And to be honest with you, when I first sort of started um, studying the difference between pillar ball and C hub, I was I was so sure that this is the key. This this makes all the difference. The inclination on the front, uh, the way the tire camber changes when the wheel turns, like the obvious things that you can see. But as I continued and as I made my own parts for my car and I made sort of pivot ball geometry on my C hub and drove, I realized that, okay, I haven't really figured out what's going on. And I knew that I needed to look at the rear end in more detail. I needed to understand what was going on because that was the key. And indeed it was. So next we have to look at the rear end. On the rear end, we have to start here. On the rear, we don't have steering. So there's no steering axis, but there is offset. And offset does create a moment arm too. So this is your sort of typical Kyosho rear end. On a Ky Well, Kyosho actually has a lot more offset than in this image here. But the idea is that this is the point that the hinge pin, the outer hinge pin on the rear arm attaches to the hub. And then in the Kyosho typical C hub car example, again, the center point of the contact patch is to the outside of that hinge pin. Now, I didn't actually fi find an official term for this, but I call this negative offset in this direction. Then a Mugen style rear hub. Again, this is the point at which the hub attaches to the arm. So this is the, where the hinge pin goes. And then here, the center point of the contact patch is to the inside of the hinge pin. And then this, this distance here, this would be the moment arm in this case. So if we go here, we can see, okay, so on the Kyosho, this is the hinge pin. And then to the outside of that, you have the center point of the contact patch. This is where the forces uh, act on the, on the tire. So again, when you accelerate, what happens? This tire wants to tow in. So same on the other side. And then you guessed it, when you brake, they want to tow out. So again, we have a situation where, so on, on the Kyosho car, when you get on power, the rear end grips really well because the tires themselves want to tow in. They want to tow in and keep the car going straight. They don't want to allow the, the rear end to slide. And then when you brake, well, it's not quite as stable then because when you brake, the, the tires want to tow out and you, you know that less towing on the rear means that it's uh, less stable. And then if we look at the Mugen, we have the opposite scenario. So the hinge pin is to the outside of the contact patch center. center. So when you accelerate, the tires want to tow out. And then when you brake, they want to tow in. So what does this mean then? Well, it's the opposite to the C hub uh, situation. When you get on power, the rear tires want to tow out. So this is actually the key to how the pillar, pillar ball car works. So let's go back a bit. A pillar ball car is typically relatively neutral, smooth going into a corner. And then the steering increases slightly mid corner. But then when you get on power in the corner, the front end pushes a bit. So the front tires, as explained earlier, they want to tow out. And this is why the pillow ball cars are so good in sort of high grip situations, uh, fast, let's say fast sweepers. And um, especially if they're rough, bumpy sweepers, because the front tire, outside tire, doesn't want to turn the car more or catch anything. It, it just wants to sort of tow out and it sort of aids the car in sliding over the bumps and not catching them and flipping the car over. But everyone knows that sort of mid corner, when you get on power, the uh, pillow ball car will suddenly turn more. It will rotate more. 
So, like I said before, I thought it was the front end. It's not. It's the rear end. The rear end actually wants to turn the car more because the rear tires want to tow out. So if you imagine same scenario now, and this car is turning left. So more load is transferred onto the outside tire and the outside tire wants to tow out. It's aiding the car in road in rotation. So the rear end doesn't want to grip and stay uh, uh, straight like on the C-Hub car. It actually wants to help turn the car. So it's not as simple as saying that a C-Hub car drives this way, a pillow ball car drives that way because you need to combine the front end with a rear end and then you know how the car will drive. This is how I would describe the handling of a C-Hub car. The front end is dominant. So that front end is, has a very powerful role in the handling of the car because the front end is quite responsive. So the steering is aggressive and responsive and you have great off power steering. So as you brake to go into a corner, the front tires already tow out. So it's a bit unstable left to right. Then you let off the brake, you turn in, the front end has good grip. It has good initial grip, good side bite. So it turns the car into the corner. But also the rear end actually also because of the offset has good initial grip, good um, side bite. So the car will turn into the corner with grip front and rear. Then, so you navigate the corner and as you accelerate out, uh, what happens is that the car pushes slightly and it pushes slightly because the rear is gripping because the front is actually turning the car. So out of the corner, the front is predominantly turning the car, but you have to remember as you accelerate load moves off the front tires onto the rear tires. So when you're accelerating the, the rear is sort of the rear has more grip potential because there's more load on it and the front tires are kind of light, but the front tires are the ones that are trying to turn the car more. So that's why you have a slight push when you exit the corner on a C-Hub car. So it feels kind of neutral and easy because of that. So front end dominant, good initial responsive steering. So good, good off power steering. And then when you get on power, car pushes a bit. So typically what people do is they adjust the front end first. So if they need more steering or they need less steering, they need more on power, off power steering, less on power, off power steering, they'll focus on the front end of the car and try and, and fix it by adjusting the front. Okay. So same explanation, but let's add the rear to that. So like I said already, good entry grip. What happens then when you get into the corner? We didn't talk about that yet because I think that, that the rear end is more important here. If you drive within the capability of what the, or the capacity of the, the car within the sort of working range of the car of the setup, then what happens is after that initial grip going into the corner, you'll lose some grip mid corner. So the car will rotate mid corner. And then when you get on the power again, the rear end will grip again. So if you are sliding slightly and you get on the, on the power, the rear end will stop sliding grip and drive the car out. But if you get this wrong, so if you are too aggressive, what happens is initially you turn in the front end, turns the car in the rear end is gripping and then mid corner, the rear end loses some grip. You, you could spin out. So this is a typical problem actually on difficult, tricky tracks. And uh, when a driver goes to a new track and isn't quite sure of the speed to carry in a corner on C hub cars, you tend to see people spin out because of this reason. So that's, that's the balance that you are, you are looking for on a C hub type car. Um, so the rear end is set to be stable with good grip mid corner. That's what you're really looking for from the rear end. So you, so you want it to have good grip mid corner, so you don't spin out. And 
you normally only really adjust the rear end if you can't get the desired result from adjusting the front end first. So you set the rear end to have good grip always, and then you are mainly adjusting the front to get more steering or less steering or something like that. And if you can't achieve that, then you adjust the rear. Then if we compare to pivot ball cars, it's a bit different. So here, I would say that the front end is numb. Initial steering is not so much. Uh, so the off power steering is sort of average. And then as you slow down and you are mid corner, you have a slight increase in mid corner steering. Now it's because of the front and the rear, but let's focus on the front first. So the front turns the car a bit more mid corner. Then when you get on power, then it pushes again. So it's smooth in, slight increase mid corner, then you get on power, it pushes. And this is what I explained already, what, why it's so good for bumps and sweepers and on power sections, because the front end naturally is calm and wants to just push. It doesn't want to turn the car. It doesn't have that initial grip, initial side bite. So it's good for those things. So then the rear end, the rear end on a pillow ball car is made to be dominant. And what I mean is that where I said that the front end is dominant on a C hub car, the rear end is dominant on a pillow ball car. That means that it's more critical for the setup to get the rear end right. So the front end is kind of, you just set it to be smooth and numb and handle the bumps. Okay. That's good. The rear end, it's smooth on corner entry. Then it has less grip mid corner, but then when you get on power, it's not like the C hub car. Now it doesn't stop the slide and grip. It actually increases the slide if you are sliding or just if it has grip, it wants to turn the car more. It wants to rotate the car. So when you get on power, the rear end rotates the car more. So you have oversteer on power basically. So you adjust the rear of the car for mid corner and on power steering. This is sort of backwards to what you would do on a C hub car, but it's, it's important to understand this because I think many people tend to think that, okay, so I need to adjust steering. I'm going to set the front of the car up, but it's not always that way. And here I hope that you understand that, especially on these, these cars like a Mugen, the rear end is often what you need to look at if you want to affect steering. One more thing that I, I want to just mention uh, before we continue, apart from this scrub radius in the front offset in the rear and how tires either toe in or toe out or when accelerating and when braking, there's something else important that happens on the rear end of the car. And this is mainly at the point where mid corner you're getting on power and more load is is transferred to the rear of the car this is the real key point like when things go wrong wrong in a corner i think this is a, a relevant point to look at we need to look at this image here uh this is a car now so this is the chassis of the car this is the upper link this is the hub the lower arm this is the tire and now imagine that this car is driving away from you and turning left again. So it's turning left and this is the center of gravity. So there's a centrifugal force that wants to roll the chassis outward. What that means is that this lower arm here is pushing on the rear hub. And as the centrifugal force is rolling the chassis outwards, more load is transferred onto this tire, the outside tire. So there's a heavier load on the outside tire, lighter load on the inside tire. That means that there's a lateral force here, stopping the car from just continuing straight. So the car is turning and well, if this is the rear end of the car, this lateral force is stopping the rear from sliding out. It's the rear is following the front around the corner now. Because of this, 
lower arm pushing on the hub. This hub actually wants to fall over this in this direction. It wants to fall over into positive camber. And what's stopping the rear hub from the rear outer hub from falling into positive camber is the upper link. So the upper link here is actually being stretched and the upper link is pulling on the chassis. And why is this relevant? Well, it's relevant because the geometry itself of a car affects the stiffness. It, it affects how the car rolls. So it, there's something that I, I would call geometric roll stiffness. So by adjusting the geometry of the car, we can make a car softer or harder. So it's not just by changing shock positions or springs that we can make a car harder or softer in roll. We can also do it with the geometry. So for example, just a quick example, the, the link here. If we lower the link on the tower, this uh, upper link is going to be resisting the chassis movement down here because the chassis wants to roll and this location wants to roll downwards here. Well, the link is pulling it up at the same time. So it's not allowing the chassis to roll down. And if we lower, lower the link enough, what happens is with a high roll center, we, we're not going to talk about roll centers now, but with a high roll center, this link will actually lift the chassis up. So the whole car will actually rise up when it wants to roll. But what's relevant now for this discussion is the fact that this upper link pulling on the chassis resists roll and it makes the car stiffer. Now, if we were to raise the link a lot here on, on the inside, we are lowering the roll center a lot. Okay, we can achieve a situation where the car actually, the link actually pulls on the chassis and wants to roll it downwards. So it introduces more roll. So that force actually is rolling, helping to roll the car instead of helping to um, keep it flat and resisting roll. So yes, there is that, but let's focus on this case where this upper link is resisting the roll. That's often what we have in, in our cars, in corners. Okay, so why is this relevant? It's relevant for this reason. Again, we look at the rear hub and how on a Kyosho style situation where the center line of the tire is to the outside of the outer hinge pin. As the load increases on this tire, it will uh, try to rotate the hub into negative camber. So it's reducing the force that's already in the upper link from that lower arm pushing on the hub, trying to rotate it into positive camber. So the two forces are opposed. And then in the other case, on a typical pillow ball car on a Mugen where the center line of the tire is to the inside of the hinge pin. As load increases on that tire, the load tries to rotate the, the hub into positive camber in the same direction as the force caused by the lower arm pushing on the hub, trying to flip the hub into positive camber. So the offset force is adding to that other force. So there is even more force in the upper link. So Kyosho style reduces the force in the upper link and Mugen style adds to the force in the upper link. So what does this mean for the car then? It means that with the Kyosho style rear hub, when you're mid corner and you get on power, the upper link isn't going to resist the roll of the car as much, so the car will be softer. Now, this is actually one reason why, if we look at some pictures of the cars, we see that on Kyosho cars, typically the shocks are relatively stood up because when you stand the shock up, it supports the rear of the car more. And 
the Kyosho needs this because here you can also see well how much offset the car has. So the hinge pin is here, and the hex is far out here because we want or they want the center point of the contact patch to be outside of the hinge pin. So the car is turning right now. More load ends up on this outer rear tire. The load will want to flip this hub into negative camber. But the force coming from the arm here wants to flip it into positive camber. So the forces are working against each other. That means that the force here in the upper link is smaller. So there's less ge geometric roll resistance, which means that we have to rely more on the shock and the spring. So on the Kyosha, the rear shocks are stood up more for this reason. Then if we look at the Mugen, for example, on a Mugen, the shocks are often very laid down. Now they can do this and get away with it because let's see if I have a picture of a Mugen hub. Okay, so on the Mugen hub, the hinge pin is very close to the hex. So what happens is, like we've explained already, the contact patch will be to the inside of the hinge pin. So in this situation, as more load is transferred onto this outside tire in a corner, the load on the tire will try to flip this hub into positive camber. And that's the same direction that the lower arm is pushing on the hub, flipping it into positive camber. So those two forces add to each other. Uh, so there's more force in the upper link. So there's more geometric roll resistance in the geometry of this car, which means that they can run the shocks more laid down because the geometry is keeping the rear end of the car more flat. So they don't have to rely on the shock position and the, on the shock spring to support the, the car. Does that make sense? So I just wanted to mention this also because these two things, this, this, this point is actually the opposite. So the twisting forces are opposite on a Mugen rear hub and a Kyosha rear hub. And this second twisting force from the vertical load is also opposite. So they, the rear hubs are completely different in the way they work and really important to know when, when you are adjusting the car, really. And this is why, for example, on a, on a Kyosho, when you go to a wider hex, you are increasing the distance here. So you are increasing the moment arm. So on the front, you are increasing the scrub radius with a wider hex. And on the rear, you are increasing the offset. So that means that if we look at the front, when you put the wider hex on, you have a longer scrub radius, more force is transferred to the knuckle. You have even more responsive steering. And when you put a narrow hex on, you have less responsive steering and a shorter scrub radius. Now, if we look at the Mugen, it's actually the opposite to the Kyosho. So on a Mugen, if you put a wider hex on, then you're actually reducing the scrub radius. So reducing the forces uh, that effect the force can have on the steering. And if you put a narrower hex on, you are increasing the scrub radius. So they are the opposite in this way. If you want more aggressive steering, and if you're on a smooth track, bumps aren't a problem, then on a Kyosho, you would go to a wide hex. On a Mugen, you would go to a narrow hex. If you want the car to be better in bumps, not catch so much, have less side bite, on a Kyosho, you would go to a narrow hex. On a Mugen, you would go to a wide hex. So it's the opposite. And the same is actually true for the rear end. So if we look at the Kyosho style, if you go to a wide hex on a Kyosho, 
you are increasing the offset. If you go to a narrower hex, you're reducing the offset. So on a Kyosho with a wide hex, you'll have more side bite, more aggressive grip. So you'll have more grip into the corner on the rear. Uh, then maybe because of that, if you overcook it, you lose the rear in the corner. But then when you get on power, it grips really well again. If you go to a narrower hex, all those transitions will be smoother. So you have less grip going in so that you won't notice it as much as you reduce the grip in the corner. Then you get on the gas. You don't have quite as much grip again when you accelerate. Um, Mugen, this is different again. So on the Mugen, if you go to a wider hex, you are reducing the offset. So that means that the forces will be smaller again. So the wider hex will actually be better in bumps. The differences in grip will be more subtle, smaller. And on the Mugen, if you go to a narrow hex, you are increasing the offset. So that means the forces will be bigger, which means that the car will be worse in bumps and the differences in grip will be bigger also. So you'll actually have more of that oversteer on power as you get on power in the corner the rear will want to turn the car more so yeah this is uh important to note and remember not all cars are the same you can't set all cars up the same and finally i want to show you some examples the tlr because this was a car that actually originally when it was released they released one version which just didn't work at all I, I actually they didn't even release it i think they made a car and it they couldn't get it to work so they had to remake it partially at least now the problem that they faced was that they basically made a they they just put i don't know what they were thinking to be honest but they just copied a mugen rear end and put it on a car and then they had a sort of losi style front end on it and well the front end was just too aggressive so the front end was steering a lot and then the rear end as we've discussed also turned the car so when you were mid corner and you got on power they would just do a donut basically if you weren't paying attention like the front end would turn the car and the rear end would turn the car so if you remember i said the pillow ball car front end very numb neutral rear end turns the car okay voila we're good kyosho front end turns the car rear end grips very good good and stable so tlr made a car where both ends of the car were aggressive and even now so we look at the current one which is the fixed version it still has this same thing where they have this c hub steering plus they have a, this knuckle is super long so they have a lot of offset here on the front and with that offset they have a big scrub radius so that's going to make the front end quite aggressive and then when we look at the rear end of i didn't find a bigger picture of this but when we look at the rear end of the tlr you see here that it's like a mugen this hub they uh the hinge pin is here and the hex is very close so very little offset and the center point of the the wheel will be to the inside of the hinge pin so it will do what the mugen does go in the corner mid corner you get on power the rear end will want to turn the car so that's tlr's problem actually so the people who are having issues with this car because it turns too much that's the problem the front end is turning the car and the rear end is turning the car the front end is super aggressive off power and on power it turns the car also and then the rear end off power is sort of neutral to slightly loose and then when you get on power it turns the car also so it's that's all there is to it that's the issue then if we look at the s works now this is an interesting case I actually asked Robert about this situation because Canas has been fast and Canas has been beating Robert in Spain. And I asked him, 
I asked Robert that, do you feel that Kanas has more drive out of corners than you? Do you feel that you're losing to him on your polished, slippery tracks out of the corner? And Robert said he does. He thinks that Kanas gains on him in that those situations. And, well, we have an explanation for that. So, now this... I know th I'm going to sound like a dickhead, but I'm going to say it. Sometimes these things happen and in RC, the, there aren't that many designers that really know what's going on. Often what happens is they just copy something from one car and copy something from another and just mix and match and something happens. So what S-Works did was they basically, S-Works first car, they just copied a Mugen pretty much. And then for some reason, they decided that they would copy the Kyosho rear end. Maybe they were thinking like, okay, so a rear end is kind of loose or something, and Kyosho has really good rear grip. Let's put a Kyosho rear end on it. Okay, so Kyosho rear end. This is the S-Works rear hub. Looks a lot like Kyosho too, ironically. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the same geometry as Kyosho. Um, they made a new one, however, which... The offset is slightly less and they have an insert here too where you can adjust the amount of offset i believe but this is the key the fact that they have a pillow ball front means that the front end is pretty neutral and calm then they have a lot of offset in the rear which if you remember good grip going in slightly less mid corner so the car rotates then you get on power, the rear end grips. So probably this development with less offset on the rear hub is because the top guys said they need more steering. They need more steering. The car doesn't turn enough. They need more steering. So they tested all kinds of stuff and they figured, oh, this works. But this hub, it looks like the offset is the same direction as on a Kyosho, not as on a Mugen. Or then it's very close to zero. At least with the insert, you can get it to be uh, as on the Kyosho. And what, what would this do? This would mean that when Kanas gets on power in a corner, on a slippery track, he's already turned the car. He's drifted through the corner. He's on power. He wants to go. The rear end grips and goes. So he doesn't have to be afraid when getting on power. The front end is smooth. The rear end doesn't want to turn the car, it wants to grip and go. Robert, on the other hand, with the Mugen, so we remember the Mugen rear hub. Robert, when he is chasing Kanas, Kanas gets some power and accelerates out of the corner. Robert gets some power, the rear hub wants to turn the car. So Robert isn't just punching it and going. Robert is getting on power, car wants to oversteer, straighten out, go. Do you see what I mean? So it's, that is where he's losing, losing a bit of time. So it's, hopefully this helps to show you that it's not that as straightforward as, oh, C-Hub does this, Pillow Ball does that. The rear end also affects the overall picture and the handling of the car. And there's not one correct answer. So it's more of a case where the designer of the car has to pick a front end, a rear end, and decide what he wants to achieve, and then do that, basically. And when you mix and match, and when you don't understand what's going on, you can end up with weird situations where the front and rear are fighting each other, or they are compounding uh, each other in the way where the car either just pushes a lot or it turns a lot or in a certain on power it turns a lot but off power it doesn't like there are so different scenarios for what you can end up with and uh, this was hard to explain i hope you understood